Hey everyone, Doug here from BNH. I also have Alex from Intel here with me today. We're going to have a little discussion about the new Intel Core Ultra series of processors, and they're debuting pretty soon in a series of laptops. Uh, we just put a video out, but today we're specifically going to talk a little bit about the new AI NPU engine that can be found in the Core Ultra series and how it's going to change the way we work with certain applications and, of course, just productivity overall. So let's get started overall at a high level. What's new with the Core Ultra series? Yeah, so what's new with the Core Ultra series, you actually just pointed out, one of the new things that we have in there is the NPU. But actually this processor has been redesigned from the ground up and is one of the biggest changes that we have done from the architecture point of view in the last 40 years. Uh, when we were designing this, this processor, there were three things that we were looking into. Uh, we were looking into how to improve power consumption. We were looking into also how to bring AI to everybody, and by everybody I mean the client, the, the regular PCs and laptops. And we were also looking to do a leap in graphics. So we, those are the kind of three things that we were looking from a type of goals perspective. We used to have something that was called a monolithic die, which is pretty much, if you think of it, it was a processor in a Lego block. Mm -hmm. But now we have uh, completely changed that and made it a multi-tile die. And what it is, is you can think of different Lego uh, little blocks put together to be a big processor. Because we have those different tiles uh, that conform the whole processor, we could actually turn them on and off depending on what workload or application we're running. So that will help you uh, save battery. So that's one of the things that I was saying, kind of looking into uh, power management, uh, save your battery longer, uh, be able to do more on that uh, flight with your laptop. Uh, the other thing that we're looking for is uh, the AI. This is kind of the first time that you actually will be able to have uh, directly um, access to uh, this type of engines, because right now what we, the way we do interact with AI is we have it, let's say, in our cell phone or stuff, and it actually goes to the cloud. And when it goes yeah. to the cloud, and then it comes back. But here, you actually have engines within your, within your, within your system, within your laptop, that we're able to do this. So you have uh, three types of engines. We have the NPU that you mentioned. We have the graphics, which is the GPU, which is a uh, built-in art graphics. And we also have the CPU. So all those three are capable of doing AI workloads. Now, I know that those those three, um, you know, you can do that locally or on the cloud, but what is the advantage of doing it locally in general? Yes, so when you go to the cloud, you actually have to deal with what we deal every day when it, when it comes to the internet. You have to deal with latency, make sure that the quality of service and all these different things. And right now we are, uh, for lack of a better word, in the infancy of AI. So there's a lot of things maybe that in the future we don't want to share with the cloud, like privacy information, all, this, all the different things that we want to keep in our devices, keep locally. So a biometrics, for example, or if you have a personal assist, AI personal assistance, there's a lot of things that you will not like to share with the cloud. So all those things, that's what you want to keep up on your local device, plus the latency of having that uh, interaction with the cloud back and forward if you have that connection. Um, could you perhaps give an example of uh, a kind of application someone would use pretty commonly uh, that would be accelerated by the NPU? Uh, by the NPU, yes. So NPU stands for Neural Processing Unit, and one of the things that we use a lot, for example, it will be, uh, you know, the zoom, zoom calls that we used to do, mm -hmm. right? So now that we're doing a lot of video conferences and you would like to blur the background, that will be one thing that the NPU is great at because the NPU is, uh, the main idea for the NPU is to do all these artificial intelligence workloads and consume low power. So you want the specific tasks that are dedicated to that. So for example, like you just said, the Zoom call is something that you want to be able to do for, you know, you have conferences that last hours, or hopefully not, but at least an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then you don't want your battery to die or not consume a lot of power, but you still want to, you know, because sometimes you have your little kids running in the background or your dog or, yeah, so you want that blur. So that's one of the examples of, for NPU usage, for the NPU engine. I can definitely understand why one would want an NPU over, say, a CPU, mm -hmm. um, especially because it's fixed function, it has more, uh, you know, just dedicated resources to this lower power. What about over a GPU? Does that offer still enough flexibility or programmability to get the kind of breadth of applications that are out there? Yes. So the, the good thing about this, about these processors, you have all three of them. And one way to think of it is like, if you want to, you can set the workload to the CPU. And the CPU is for something that you want it to be something light and quick. Uh, for the GPU is something that we're used to more seeing, more like animation, renders, all that kind of things, or uh, yeah, all those things. And the, and the NPU is more like something that you have to do constantly through a long time, but a low power. Mm. Uh, 
And with the different APIs and applications and software stacks that we have, you can actually decide which one do you want to use, uh, depending on, on how workload and how you want to yeah, decide where, where, where the workload to land. You mentioned Zoom. Is there any other, uh, I guess, high-profile software that's that's either in progress on this or, or perhaps debuting yes. pretty soon? Uh, Teams for Microsoft is, is one of the things that we have in there. Uh, we are constantly working with different uh, software developers. Uh, that I can tell you, I know Teams. We're all constantly working with Adobe. Uh, we're also working with uh, GIMP. Uh, that I can recall from the top of my head. So there's a couple of different ones that, that we're currently working, and there's, there's more, right? Now, what about the changes to the art graphics in this series? Um, I know we're now, is this the second or third generation now where it's actually called Arc? Yeah, so this is the art graphics. So we call it built in art graphics. Mm -hmm. uh, it uses our XELPG uh, architecture. Right, right. One way to think about it is you, we just grab, which I am completely oversimplifying it, and my engineers are going to kill me. But you're pretty much grabbing a discrete card and put it in, into inside the processor. Uh, it comes with a lot of great things. For example, for uh, all of the for all of the video creators, you know, now you can actually encode and decode AV1, which yeah. is which is huge. That's I've been following that for a while. Yeah, yeah, which to me I was like, okay, decode yes, but encode. I was like, wow, that's that's pretty impressive. The other one that I thought was pretty impressive, especially because the last couple of years, in order to do playback at 80, at 8K. Mm -hmm. Uh, you needed a pretty beefy system, and now, now your laptop. Uh, one of the things that it was also done for the graphics is, even though we grabbed it, for lack of a better word, we grabbed that graphic and crammed it in, we actually took it apart, and we split it. And we send, we have a tile that we call the graphics tile, mm -hmm. and, but then we also, uh, there's also, you have the media engine and the engine playback, and that kind of got split into different areas. So that way you can do playback of videos, Netflix or whatever you're watching and have less power consumption because the, the, the media engine is separated from the whole graphic style. Oh, so you can okay. actually shut down the whole graphics and just do the, the playback aside and that way you save more uh, more battery on the battery life, so less power consumption. Do you happen to know anything about, let's say, uh, video editing software that often relies on GPU acceleration for things like um, image decoding, yeah, rendering, uh, compositing. I guess we're starting to see now AI tools. I know some of the, I know DaVinci Resolve and Premiere is also now getting this AI noise reduction tools. Um, are there any uh, perhaps early looks as to how these things could be used in conjunction with one another? We were running in the, in the lab. Uh, we were using, uh, is not, a video related, but it was uh, audio related, which is this audio called Audacity, in which you actually you can pick what to, uh, we're separating the tracks of, mm -hmm. a, of a whole music track, and you can actually tell it which type of engine you want to use to do that. So you can actually tell it, like, do you want it to do with the with the, G, uh, the GPU or the NPU? So yeah, there is that possibility as long as you know it's, it's coded in there. So I think we can then wrap it up. Uh, my final question for you is, where do you see this in maybe a generation or two? That's a pretty good question. And it's very interesting because if you start to think about it, like if you think about the processors two generations ago, I don't think uh, the, the world was thinking chat GPT or all these AI different things. Uh, I, see, I think we are on you know, the starting phase and there is a lot that a lot of very interesting things that will come out of it. Uh, now that we have this great different types of uh, AI engines that we're providing to you from NPU, GPU, to CPU that you have in your hands. So it'll be pretty cool to see what people can, can do now. What kind of services or, or software do you think could become an everyday thing that we don't think of because of the install base of the NPU in a few years? We have right now some basic uh, personal assistants. But I think mm. I think in the next couple of years that's going to get very personal, very, very specific, tailored for you. I mean, we already need to do that, but it could be very more specific because right now we want to ask like specific questions. Right, and it makes sense for it to be local. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. local, private, as as private as it can be. But yeah, th those are the kind of things that we're. That's interesting. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing all these details. Thank you. It's appreciate very it. Very cool to hear about the the future, which is also kind of the present. It's here. It's like you said, yeah, two years ago, I, we did not really think about it. And it's actually even more fascinating to put that into the context of it only took two years to get, get it in a processor as well on, on that level. 
So it's, uh, yeah, it's really cool. I'm always excited to see something new. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed our little chat about the future of AI and NPU engines in Intel's new Core Ultra series. Uh, don't forget, we have another video we just put out uh, about an MSI laptop. It also features the new series. So let us know in the comments below what you think, and I'll see you next time.